Well, Ray Martinez, how are you? I'm doing good. So glad to have you with me today. Um, here's the deal. Of all the stories I've heard in my life, yours is one of the most interesting. Born to a single mom, uh, given up by need for adoption, uh, raised by Hispanic family, wonderful family. Uh, ended up going to college, joining the military during the Vietnam War. Military police came back or served us for 25 years in law enforcement as a police officer here in Fort Collins. Then ran for mayor, became mayor for six years, uh, city council four years. Uh, you have a servant heart. And in these days of great upheaval, when we're assessing ourselves and assessing stuff going on, I think your voice is so important to hear. So um, I'm just saying, Ray, talk to me. Talk to us. Give us some insights into the dynamics of what's going on. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the orphanage. One of the first things I ever felt uh, uh, pressured by was kids that looked at me as an orphan. Even their adult parents would refer to it. It's, they wouldn't allow their kids to play with us because we were orphans in this right. big state orphanage. But after getting adopted, coming to Fort Collins, uh, and, and I got transferred to another elementary school from the original one that I was at, and it was all Anglo, all white kids. <laughs> and my sister and I, we just kind of looked around, but you know, we didn't think too much of it. We yeah. just, you know, realize we're the only ones here. And then we started getting called names. We got these racist names that we'd never heard of before. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what they were. We had to go home and ask. And boy, that infuriated my parents. <laughs> they were not happy about that. And of course, they called the school and, and we tried to straighten things out. But, you know, I got chased home a few times and I just bullies in the school, I guess, is what you want to call it. But then I went to junior high school and the all of a sudden, the geography change of the people, the demographics were more Latinos. I saw more of us around, you know, and I thought, hmm, going to get even on this one, you know. But then the school gave us a book to read called Black Like Me. And I read that book, and it really changed my thinking. It was, it was important to read that book. But just growing up, uh, we experienced discrimination. The last, what we call the white trade signs, went down in 1962. My uncle and a former council member, Willie Lopez, and a former county commissioner, he, they helped lead the charge of getting those signs taken down. Which what, what is that? Her. Well, white what? trade signs had signs that said, uh, no Mexicans or dogs allowed. They had them on restaurants. Wow. In particular. So, I mean, yeah, I remember us going downtown. My mother said, we can't go in there. And I, I, never, I didn't quite understand why, but now I do. But, you know, it, it was those kinds of things that really triggered. Uh, and, and, it, and Willie Lopez and my uncle and a few other people said, that's got to come down. And it was a police officer, Officer Holfaster, who really liked the Hispanics. And the Hispanics really liked him. And he went with them. And he ate told those restaurants, you got to take these down. This time's over. We got to change. So that was something significant. And we saw some real value and change. And I, and I always think, you know, even when I was mayor on city council, that uh, people, they don't want certain things. They don't want the, you know, this in my backyard or this and that. And, and we try to improve something and, and people push back. And I always tell them, I said, look, you want progress, but you don't want change. How does that work? <laughs> I mean, there's be change. And Dr. Carball was one of my mentors in school. But he used to say, he said, you know what? God gives us oranges, but it's up to us to peel it back. We're the ones that have to look on the inside, see who we are, and, and try to, you know, bring the good fruits in our life, I guess, out and try to share that and try to be something without trying to take over something. And, you know, the power that people usually want, power doesn't come from what we know. It comes from what we need to learn. When I first came onto the police department, it, it was a, a, a bad thing for my Mexican people. They thought I was a traitor because I was a, a police officer. When now my people are saying, we don't hire enough of them. So you can see how these things have changed, right? Yeah. You're a scripture guy. You know the scriptures. Give me a couple of scriptures that really speak to you. God loves the heart, and that's just exactly how it, we ought to live is by the heart. When you look at John 7, 24, it says, do not judge by appearances. And the New Living Translation says, look beneath the surface. 
uh, get away from the, the, the debate because debate looks for differences. Go to dialogue. Dialogue looks for solutions. That's where we should be at. When you look at 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And I think it's awfully interesting. Isaiah 53, 2 talks about what Jesus looked like. And it says there was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. So our theme this weekend is Outrageous Grace, and I'd just like to say, Brother Martinez, <laughs> that you are an example of the grace of God at work. Thank you so much for being with us.